Hey, what's going on everybody out there in YouTube land? Today, I'm going to be answering questions about a GM24X conversion to a small block Chevy, you know, your Gen 1 small block. There are kits out there available for, you know, the Gen 2 uh, LTX motors, and those all work great. So, we're going to preface this conversation with, why did you do this? First off, you know, I'm really experienced in all the 995 price point TBI EFI kits, the Holly Snipers, the Phytex, the MSD Atomics, and even some fast, easy EFI, which you know really doesn't hit that $1,000 price point. But we're looking at you know lumping this 24x setup into the same price range, and what is the usability differences, and what do you gain out of a 24x setup over the standard? Uh, Holly EFI, the sniper kit with an MSD distributor, or the Holly you know, cam sync distributor that you can actually use the Holly to program, you know, to handle the timing. Which, it's one of those kind of deals where if you look in the videos of the past on this truck, at one point this thing did have an MSD Atomic EFI on it. Now, it's got enough injector in it to handle 600 horsepower. This truck was turbocharged. It did have the MSD Atomic on it. Had a Victor Jr. style intake manifold, an MSD Pro Bill distributor, the MSD CDI box, and all other stuff. What I wanted to do, and versus what I had hardware limitation wise, is I found that the big issue here with these GM trucks is, well, actually, not so much GM trucks, but the big issue here with the aftermarket EFI is for that $1,000 price point, and what we're going to go over real quick is. Happy wife, happy life. You remember that now with what you're spending on your project. You, I, you know, those thousand dollars on that MSD Atomic, sure it worked great, drove good, handled the boost, and did everything else really well. And, you know, it was a good, good setup. But the problem is, it only had enough injector, and they are proprietary injectors, to where the MSD checked out 600 horsepower. And we found that it was trying to command way more injector duty cycle than what was what it was able to supply. Right at about I don't know 10, 12 psi, it was pff, I'm done. It was trying to command well over 100% injector duty cycle, and it just we couldn't get any more fuel through it. We actually did wind up pushing 85 pounds of fuel pressure through this with a twin 340 pump setup to actually kind of compensate or crutch that problem just a little bit. And, you know, it worked for a while, but when you get into it, you're like, man, I want more, and I want to drive this truck, you know, across the country if I want to. If, if I want to go visit some car show back home on the East Coast, you know, OC Hot Rod Week, Endless Summer Cruising, stuff like that, I could drive it. Hell, I could trailer it. But, you know, what happens when that MSD fuel pressure regulator shits out and or, you know, an MSD injector fails, or same with a Holly, what happens when the injector fails? You're stuck sitting in the water, and you just can't do anything about it until you get replaced some parts in the mail. So, that's why I started really looking towards the GM24X swap. So I started looking, and I was like, man, oh god, you know, the EFI intake, the injectors, it's going to be a lot of money, and it's just, god, it's going to suck. So I started looking, and I started digging around on eBay and checking all this other stuff out, and I said, oh, hell, okay, so I found the Holly intake pretty cheap, found the uh, throttle body elbow cheap, got the throttle body, it's one of those Chinese specials, and, you know, it works well for what it is. Now, you know, I'm running a bit bigger of an injector, but you can even run stock LS truck injectors, depending on what you guys want to do and how your setup is. I mean, it really all depends. Uh... Now, going back to this, I wanted to be able to drive this truck over, so I broke down on the side of the road, uh, say my engine coolant temperature sensor shits out, and, well, you know what happens in a newer LS truck or newer vehicle period when one of those goes to shit, it really richens up in kind of a fail-safe mode just to get you where you need to go because it thinks, you know, it's super cold, and before you know it, you're popping, cracking, and farting, trying to cruise down the highway, and the sucker has no power whatsoever. So, what you have to do with that is, you know, simplify your setup. Really simplify it, and that's what I found with this. Say anything breaks down going down the road, or, you know, whatever. I mean, anything sensor-wise I have an issue with, 
I can walk into a local parts store and I can go to the counter and I go, look, I need an engine coolant temperature sensor for a 99 Silverado 1500 with a 53 in it. And they'll go, okay, here you go. And then bam, I bolt the sensor back in and I'm good to go. Now, the biggest worry I had about that is, is like, okay, is all this stuff going to be available? Well, so you start looking and you go, holy crap, GM made just tons of these trucks. So this stuff is out there and it's easy to find the parts. If you don't want to go to the parts store, hit a junkyard up. The parts are probably there and it's going to make life really easy on you. A coil shits out, hey, junkyard coils. I mean, any pick and pull is going to have an LS powered truck. You know, who cares if the motor's any good as long as it's got a good coil on it, swap your coil out and run with it. That's where I went with this setup was serviceability, drivability, and just how good overall this setup is in comparison to running an aftermarket EFI, uh, like I said, the 995 price point TBI units versus what I'm building here and what I'm wiring. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, this stuff works great. It fires right up. It doesn't matter if it's 10 degrees outside or 100 degrees. The days of your small block issues of the thing firing up, they are long gone. I mean, this thing is crisp at 10 degrees. It's crisp at 100 degrees outside. It doesn't care, and that's the best part of it. So, you know, it, it's just really hard to beat this setup for the money. So what we're going to consider this is this is going to be a primer video and a real good start to kind of get your feet wet with the GM 24X setup on a small block because I guess there are some of us out there who are still mentally ill enough to want to run a GM small block when you, you, know, you have your C of LS motors and other options available but you know I, I like personally I like engineering power I don't like really going out and doing a forum build and you know, hey Joe, what kind of cam did you run? What kind of, you know, did you do rocker trunnions to your 5.3? You know, there's nothing wrong with that. They're great motors. They're stout motors. But at the same point, for somebody who likes to really learn and tinker and mess around and just see what the best setup they can get for their money is, that's why I wound up with the GM 24X. Now, we're going to pan over here to the motor real quick, and you're going to see that, uh, you know, we've got a different setup than most people probably think. So now what we have here is literally just, it, it's just junkyard special parts, but, you know, stuff I got cheap, like this Holly intake. I got it off eBay. I think it was $225. You can get one of those Speedmaster intakes really, really cheap and not have a big issue with it. I'm sure it'll work just fine. You can use your stock truck, you know, 5.3 injectors and all that other good stuff and be just fine. You know, I've got my, uh, <laughs> I've got my uh, coil packs welded on via ICT billet, uh, you know, brackets. They're, they're cheap $40 brackets with a I don't know, $35 set of coils. And then, you know, the most expensive thing really sitting right here is this Holly intake elbow. That shit was pricey. $132 for, you know, what you get is kind of kind of up there, but it is what it is. And then I've got the old e the eBay special 102 millimeter Chinese offshore, you know, throttle body. So far, the four inch, uh, things worked great for me. Four inch carbon And then fiber I've got my typical intake tube with your standard you know, just intake air filter and all other good stuff. Now going down to it, once again I said these are GM sensors. Every single sensor in this setup is a GM sensor. I mean this is a uh, 96 to 98 Chevy Vortec 5.7 Silverado uh, actual distributor and cam sensor. The only thing different is that it has a cam, you know, a distributor cap delete plug on top of it which you can get from EFI source. So, once again, you know, we've kind of kind of gone over the hardware pretty easily and some of the sensors and you know, another thing is you're going to notice this map sensor right here. This is a three bar GM map, which God, it's probably what a $22 Amazon special. It, it, <laughs> the stuff's out there. So w once again, it's all junkyard parts or cheap eBay, Amazon stuff. And the thing just works. I mean, it's crisp when it fires up. <clears throat> Now the crank sensor, it's actually down there behind the harmonic balancer. 
on the front of the crank and it's covered up with a holly timing cover the holly timing cover is uh, it's made so you can actually run a newer uh, the crank sensor and plug it right in and everything's plug and play basically and it just beats the hell out of all that so now that we've kind of gone over gone over all of the basic stuff in terms of hardware what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together another video and you guys are going to go oh, okay how about wiring what do we have to do from there that's one of those things where we will work towards that and get an answer of it and just kind of really clarify this whole setup because once again there's not a lot of information out there on YouTube about how to do this everybody's kind of driven to spend that thousand dollar money you know towards that EFI unit from Holly, MSD, Fitech, whatever so I'm going to end this video right here and we're going to get back in another day or two in regards to wiring on this setup and we will go from there. You guys take it easy.